Hey guys, it's Ivana Cadaver, and I am here with Elliot Brodsky at the infamous, wonderful Monster Palooza. How are thank you? Thank you. Very well, thank you. Good. I wanted to talk to you, really get into some detail about Monster Palooza and the, um, the buzz that it's had over the years. And the reason I reached out to you was because it is the, in my opinion, the consummate number one monster convention in the country. And um, so I really wanted to get into the brain of Elliot Brodsky. That would be you. And, and say, so as a, as a kid, what kind of inspired you to, to do this? I was uh, totally in love with movies that would be on television with uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, the Wolfman. I just was t totally absorbed by uh, the storylines as well as the sets and especially the makeups and what was required to create these amazing designs and quite honestly when I was growing up my interest was more in uh, Jack Pierce and uh, the Westmore family and John Chambers these are all top-of-the-line makeup designers and uh, they really ruled the films from the 30s to the 60s and I grew up watching these religiously on television and uh, I knew their names actually more than the actual actors because yes. that's how much it fascinated me. Yes. Uh, my father was a dentist. I would go to his office. He had a little uh, tool shop and I would watch his uh, t uh, gentleman who do does dentures for him and I would watch him work on making actual dentures and with molds and wax and everything that actually a lot of the makeup guys from the 30s used and uh, using alginate. So I really uh, was intrigued by the whole process. Um, and I even was the guy who uh, would round up all the kids and I'd direct eight millimeter movies and uh, of which I still have a lot of them. And uh, we'd uh, really write up scripts and uh, rehearse. When it was a snow day and everybody was off from school I would transform our den into a movie theater with music and dimmers on the lights and uh, we'd screen movies on an 8 millimeter projector. Sometimes I would show them in fast motion to give them a comedic flair or I actually had little uh, castle films which were 8 minute um, short versions of full length films. Yes. So I would work on uh, going through my father's record collection to find music to accompany it because it really was silent with subtitles and so I'd have and I make movie posters and one snowy day I went out with a big cooking pot invited everybody over for the big screening because we were all home from us for a snow day and uh, took a big s a pot uh, a s big s uh, soup pot and a ladle I went out into my yard, it was a, like 12 inches of clean snow, and started scooping up the snow, and then uh, that was, I was gonna make snow cones for everybody in, in like Dixie cups. And then I had uh, different soda and flavors, and they could choose orange or Coca-Cola, and I, I would charge five cents for entering, and you'd get the snow cone, and uh, I thought I had it over on everybody. And then my next door neighbor was looking out his back window when I happened to be in the back scooping up the snow and he blew the whistle on me. He said, I saw him out there. He was scooping that snow up. Don't eat it because you don't know what's in that snow. And, uh, but I always like to entertain and this is like Monster Blues is the big boy version of that. I hear Ste Steven Spielberg's story George Lucas, yes. and I'll say to myself, wow, they were doing what I was doing as a kid, yes. but they went to the next level, and it's really uh, uh, inspiring to see how far a person can take their dream. And it's nice to he see and hear from people who I've felt uh, were s really on the cutting edge of the industry reach out to me right. and say, we want to come to your show, we love everything about it, and uh, it's, it, it shows me that their, their interest still continues as strong as when they started, as well as 
the fans out there appreciate seeing what goes into creating characters and maybe they never really realized until they've met a sculptor who's literally sitting there and showing you the techniques he uses in creating textures and this and that. Uh, painters who have the tricks that make uh, a solid piece of plaster, if they paint it correctly, they can make it look like skin. This is a behind the scenes uh, peek behind the curtain that in years past really wasn't accessible to the fan. Everybody has that, you know, fan uh, appreciation and even the Rick Bakers of the world, they still really love this stuff. And, you know, even when they're not working on a project, they are totally submerged into the whole uh, escapism of the whole thing and creating this thing that didn't exist at one of the booths, a guy like Greg Canham, who's a multi-Academy Award winner and has been around since the Howling films and the uh, um, um, Benjamin Button was a great piece he worked on and he's here, you talk to him, he's giving you his time and his decades in the industry and he's sharing and that was sort of, uh, there was a makeup guy uh, who recently passed away named Dick Smith he was always sharing his knowledge with everybody and he was really the guy that was uh, uh, did a film called Little Big Man and he did multi appliance pieces to transform this Dustin Hoffman into a hundred year old man and it was believable and I remember seeing that movie in the movie theater with my family and saying my god that man is so old and then learning that he was in his 30s. There's just so much technique involved and years of experience that they're willing to show the fan. This is how it's done. And the people that come here, as we often talked about, Guillermo de Toro might be walking here, as just, just attending here, right. just to see what's going on. And, and maybe J.J. Abrams might be just walking. You know, not signing, just walking and, and undercover. You know? Right. Amazing that, you know, as much as they are now in the thick of it, they still want to see a show that it does celebrate the what appears on the screen as a finished product, but they also have great understanding and appreciation of the people, the artisans behind the scene. And that's what this show was supposed to be about. I'm always on the lookout for people I'll uh, be on internet movie database learning about this person or that person. and trying to get them involved in the show as well and I try my best to also focus on films that in the past like American Werewolf in London or John Carpenter's The Thing try to bring in that element to the show that obviously was a gr groundbreaking films on on their own but also broke new ground in the makeup effects world. I launched this show uh, really in hopes that other people were out there with like interests. And I didn't know how long or what the response would be, obviously. And uh, nine years ago, I chose Burbank as its um, uh, uh, pr premiere date and location. And um, I was fortunate that the uh, word got out because of my uh, association and friendships with a lot of the uh, effects guys who work in shops that I said hey how do you how do you feel about me doing a show where you guys are up front in, in getting the attention and they were like Elliot do it please do it it's not been done and it would be just like the show we all always dreamed of as kids so I took the leap of faith and found a, a location that everybody seemed to feel was convenient and uh, word of mouth uh, uh, allowed me to get um, uh, people to exhibit and um, it's hard to believe here I am nine years later it's gone from a 25,000 square foot humble beginning to now a 85,000 square foot convention hall where people are just tripping over themselves to attend. We ha actually have our main website, which is up all the time because we do two shows a year. Uh, there's the Son of Monster Palooza in, in September, and our April show is 
um, um, Monster Palooza. That's www.monsterpalooza.com. 